You wouldn't let a surgeon operate on you without washing their hands first, would you? Of course not. In fact, before most surgeries, patients are even told to wash themselves with a special antibiotic soap. But with increasing frequency, a new threat renders such measures virtually useless. Antibiotic-resistant superbugs. Antibiotics are a critical part of modern medicine. In 2014, 1 million courses of antibiotics were distributed by community pharmacies in America. That's five prescriptions for every six people, not counting the antibiotics used in hospitals. They are the primary line of defense against bacterial infections. But in response to the selection pressure widespread use of antibiotic supplies, bacteria are developing various defense messages. Superbugs can develop their antibiotic resistance in a few different ways. Some bacteria have inherent resistance where these structures naturally block antibiotics action. For example, gram-positive bacteria have an inherent resistance to the antibiotic colistin because it cannot penetrate the thick peptidoglycan layer of their membrane. Most other resistance is developed as the result of a mutation. Once the resistance exists, it can spread by several methods. The simplest method is vertical transmission. The bacterium with the mutation is better at survival in the presence of the antibiotic and therefore produces more offspring. Antibiotic resistance genes are usually on plasmids or transposons, and these genes can be transferred by conjugation, a transfer of DNA through direct contact, or transduction when a virus mistakenly takes host DNA and inserts it into another cell. It can also be moved through transformation, an uptake of DNA particles from the environment around the cell. As many ways as there are for resistance to spread, there are just as many ways for it to protect the cell against antibiotics. Most antibiotics target proteins, so alteration of target in which bacteria produce differently shaped proteins is a common strategy. They may also produce inactivating enzymes, which will attack and destroy antibiotics before they can damage the cell. Another method is by creating an efflux of the drug, which removes it from the cell so that it can no longer affect the systems within there. The final common method is to develop a decreased permeability, which will block the antibiotic entirely from entering the cell itself. When doctors encounter resistant bacteria, the usual treatment is simply to use a different antibiotic. The problem arises when they encounter bacteria that is resistant to several or even all existing antibiotics. Antibiotics research and development is an unpopular field because the same skills can be used to develop other pharmaceutical drugs, which provide much faster and higher profits. So superbugs are now appearing and adapting to antibiotics faster than new ones are being produced. To bring attention to this problem and encourage new antibiotic development, the World Health Organization released a list this February of 12 major superbugs. The bacteria are divided into three categories, critical, high, and medium threat levels. This video presents four of the bacteria on this list. One from the critical level, Actinetobacter baumani. One from the medium level, Streptococcus pneumoniae. And two from the higher threat level, Mosa and Helicobacter pylori. This makes up the majority of the list. Streptococcus pneumoniae is a gram-positive bacteria, which means it is composed of a peptoglycan layer, parapositic space, and plasma membrane. 
is facultative anaerobic, which means it can derive energy in the presence of oxygen or without oxygen. It causes infections such as pneumonia, sinus, ear, and blood infections, along with being the leading cause of meningitis. Normally found in the upper respiratory tract of healthy individuals, it can turn pathogenic in immune systems that are compromised, such as elderly, HIV patients, and the leading cause of death in children five years or younger. Its resistance includes penicillin tolerance, and in 2002, the Center of Disease Control reported 34% of strains to be resistant to at least one antibiotic and 17% to be resistant to three or more antibiotics, making it a priority three medium threat superbug. MRSA, or Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is a strain of Staphylococcus aureus that has acquired a certain gene that has given it resistance to antibiotics such as methicillin. 85% of all MRSA infections were contracted from healthcare facilities, with two thirds of patients contracting the bacteria after a stay at a healthcare facility, and one third of patients contracting the bacteria during the time they're at a healthcare facility. Some common problems that MRSA can cause are sepsis, pneumonia, and inflections in the bloodstream. MRSA is a gram-positive bacteria that has a thick outer layer wall made out of peptidoglycan. Its morphology is a caucus shape that tends to form clusters. The gene responsible for methicillin resistance is MEK-A, carried on a mobile genetic element called the staphylococcal cassette chromosome. Four forms of this have been discovered in different sizes and genetic compositions. Many MRSA isolates are resistant to several antibiotics and may be only susceptible to glycopeptide antibiotics such as vancomycin and investigational drugs. Even then, there are MRSA isolates that have decreased susceptibility to glycopeptides. MRSA infections have steadily increased over the years. In 1974, 2% of all Staphylococcus aureus infections were MRSA, which rose to 22% by 1995, 64% by 2004, and an estimated of over 70% of all Staphylococcus aureus in present day is not MRSA. It is estimated that 60% of all skin and soft tissue infections that doctors treat are MRSA infections. Helicobacter pylori is a high priority superbug. It's gram negative and it's flagellated with usually four to six flagella. It has a spiral shape and it can cause several diseases like gastritis, which is the irritation of the stomach lining. It can cause ulcers, and it can also cause mucosa-associated lymphoid lymphoma, which is cancer of the lining of the stomach. There's a latency in infection, meaning that teens often contract the bacteria, but symptoms are shown later in adulthood. Infection rates vary by region, with an 80% infection rate in developing countries, and a 40% infection rate in industrialized countries. There's a low mortality rate associated with Helicobacter pylori because there is effective treatments in the form of antibiotics. Usually 6 out of 10 patients survive. Amoxicillin is usually prescribed as part of the treatment for Helicobacter pylori. Along with this, a proton pump inhibitor is also prescribed. Clarithromycin is the main antibiotic that bites 
Helicobacter pylori. It works so well because there is a minimum inhibitory concentration, so it does not take a lot of the antibiotic to kill the bacteria. Clarithromycin binds to the 50S ribosome. It also inhibits the elongation of peptide chain. Antibiotic resistance is the main source of the antibiotic failure. The genes responsible for antibiotic resistance in Helicobacter pylori are in domain 5, and they are the A2142C gene, the A2142G gene, and the A2143G gene. These are all located in the DNA of Helicobacter pylori. Acinetobacter baumani is a gram-negative superbug, has a bacillus shape, and performs anaerobic respiration. It is considered to be one of the most common and serious multi-drug resistant pathogens, meaning it has an extensive antibiotic resistance spectrum. Because it targets tissues and exposed areas of the skin, either through accident or injury, it is the main source of infection among injured soldiers and also found in hospitals. It is linked to pneumonia and bloodstream and skin infections. The respiratory tract, surgical wounds, central nervous system, skin, and eyes all may be sites for infection or colonization. Two factors that contribute to the pathogen's antibiotic resistance are the OMPA protein and the formation of biofilms. The OMPA protein is a surface protein that has been determined to contribute significantly to the disease-causing potential of the pathogen. The ability to form biofilms allows it to grow in unfavorable conditions. This superbug can form biofilms on abiotic and living surfaces. Overall, this pathogen has the ability to quickly adjust to changes in its external environment. Possible alternative treatments for this pathogen include antibacterial phage therapy and radioimmunotherapy. However, the most effective treatment has yet to be determined.